Welcome to fun with drilling engineering. You can do all sorts of nonsense with water. For example, blowing away a tower of cans with a water jet is a lot of fun. You can clearly see that the water has quite a lot of power. And of course, engineers know how to translate this finding into a formula. Here you can see the simple formula for the momentum theorem. It states that the force which is created by a beam of water depends on the density of the water the flow rate and the velocity of the water beam. The more water we spray and the higher the velocity of the water beam, the larger the force generated or created. Well, of course, we don't just always have to knock over a stack of cans. You can also imagine, for example, that we use our water jet to heat a rotary wheel with blades, like this. If we direct the water jet on the blade on one side of the wheel, then it will start to spin pretty fast. So the drillers have also observed this effect and finally thought about the idea to use the impulse of the drilling mode to rotate a drill bit on the lower end of a drill string. Yes, of course, it works. But you have to install all the required parts for this to work in a tiny steel pipe. Yes, because the drill string is a tubular structure. So the engineers first created an outer housing that has baffles. This is what we call the stator. The baffles align the mud flow in such a way that it hits the blade of the rotor at an angle 90 degrees. Ideally, we want the mud to vertically hit the blades of the rotor. Here you can see how the rotor sits in the stator. You can also see that when the drilling mold is properly aligned by the baffles in the stator, the mold hits the blade of the rotor so that the rotor begins to turn. And this rotational energy is then used to rotate the drill bit on bottom. However, such a single stage turbine is not very strong. It generates only little power. But you can install many turbine stages in a row. And with each additional turbine state, the torque of the turbine increases. We can see such a multi-stage turbine here. It can be quite a long tool in total. The tur this turbine generates a very high rotational bit speed, at least if the bit does not require much torque. So if the drill bit is off bottom and spins freely, then the turbine rotates very, very quickly. When we run the turbine on bottom and the bit gets in touch with the formation and begins to work, then the turbine will slow down. And it will further increase the weight on bit. In extreme cases, the turbine may even stall and the bit comes to a standstill, although we are still pumping drill mud through the turbine. Such a rotor stator combination like this is an open system and the drilling mud can still pass through even if the rotor is not rotating. If you run the turbine at a low flow rate, we know it is particularly quite quick. And at a higher flow rate, it can also stall much earlier. Yet, a turbine has a very big advantage compared to a downhole positive displacement motor. That is because a turbine does not contain any rubber parts. Therefore, drill turbines can very successfully be used in deep hot boreholes where high temperatures of 200 to 250 degrees or more may prevail. For example, this is the case in very deep geothermal wells. Here the drill turbine does not care about high temperatures, as there is no plastic or rubber parts involved. You can learn so much more about direct bead drive systems in our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering, here in Freiburg. I will be happy to see you. Look off.